Hey, I want to tell you real quick about a free video series that we created for people who want to become an online nutrition coach. These videos address people's fear of not being able to get results for their clients, imposter syndrome, as well as the fear of just not being able to get clients in the first place and make this work. We also talk about why now is an enormous opportunity to become an online nutrition coach in these super stressful and uncertain times. So whether you're already a coach and just want to get better, or you've never coached but are super interested in it, check out these free video series at workingagainstgravity.com slash free training. Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. Hey, Michael. Hello. Welcome back, guys. It's the WAG podcast. We're here today to talk all about flow state. I'm super excited about this topic just because I think it's one of those things that if you know about it, you know how awesome it is. And if you don't, it's something you should definitely know about. So Sounds like we're talking about Fight Club. Are we? Yeah. Why? What's the Fight Club thing? Like if you know about it, you know how awesome it is. Oh, but like isn't the, <laughs> but if you don't, isn't the you one rule stupid. about Fight Club is that you don't Talk yeah, but then yeah, but then it grows rapidly because everybody talks about it. Oh, okay. here we are talking about flow state. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about flow state today. It is one of your questions that you submitted. So, if you want to get your question answered, then please go to www.workingagainstgravity.com forward slash podcast and scroll down to the start recording button. You can record a brief but synced message, hopefully in a quiet room so we can hear it correctly. Give us your name, where you're from, and your question. And we would absolutely love to answer it on this show. Before we get into that question from Matus today, I apologize if I'm not saying your name 100% correctly. You did say it pretty quickly. I also want to urge you guys, if you love this podcast, if you like us, if you've gotten anything from us at all, we would totally appreciate you taking a couple seconds to leave us a review. Let us know uh, what you like about the show. Let us know what you've been implementing in your life. It is the only way that we can get this podcast to grow and to reach more people. So we would absolutely really appreciate it. Cool. Let's do this. Let's play this question. Hello, guys. I'm Matheus Alcaide from Brazil. I'm listening to you guys every week, and it's been amazing, amazing content. My question is about flow state, how to get there, what benefits we have when we get there. Thank you so much, guys. Keep doing it. Thank you, Matus. I think I'm saying it correctly. This is a phenomenal question, and I think it's really important because in today's day and age, we have so many distractions Mm -hmm. in our work. Uh, in our life in general, we have our cell phones, we have emails, we have some, some people have Slack messages. There are more inputs and incoming information. There's more incoming information to us than ever before. And unless we really figure out how to prevent those things from derailing us, then I think it's almost impossible to do our best work. I think it's impossible to get into flow state and to be as productive and creative as we can possibly be. If you learn how to get into a flow state, essentially what you're learning how to do is do your most creative work. You're learning to operate at your highest level and getting into a flow state is one of the most enjoyable states, period. Yes, it's where... The work that you're doing just feels easy. It just time, there's no sense of time when you're in a flow state. Things just pass by really quickly. You're enjoying the things that you're doing. It just feels really good and you're operating at a really high level. This is something that I highly encourage people to learn about. I didn't really think about what you just said before we started the show of we live in a world today where there's not only so many distractions, but there's also so many opportunities. So it's really easy for to hop from thing to thing to thing. And there is an aspect of flow state that requires kind of sticking to something. And it's not something that you're going to get right away. It's something that requires practice and 
some level of discipline to get to a place where you can be in flow state. So I think today there's a, it's a little bit of a dying art, like mastery of something is, is going away to some degree because people hop from thing to thing to thing. Mm -hmm. So I really think this is going to be valuable today. So what is flow state exactly? It's a state of mind that you achieve when you're fully immersed in a task. And one thing that people commonly say is that you kind of forget about the outside world when you get into a flow state. Like it's the only thing that you're focused on and nothing else really exists. Some characteristics of being in flow state are that it's something that you enjoy. It's something that's challenging and it's outside of your comfort zone, but it's not so far outside that it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. What are some examples? It's like on that edge. It's like on the edge of... Mm -hmm challenging and it's pushing you to grow and push yourself a little bit, but not so hard that you can't. That it's totally outside of your capabilities. Exactly. Some examples would be an athlete or an example would be a pitcher in the World Series. They've trained their entire life for this moment. And then in the game, they're just going through the motions. They've done it thousands of times before and they're just in it. They're completely present and they play the best game of their entire life. Yeah, a pitcher might have something like tunnel vision. Like they're mm-hmm. literally their vision even starts to focus in on the catcher's mitt or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my favorite. Whenever I think of flow state, this is always the first example that comes to mind. I think about being at a restaurant and looking at the the kitchen, the, the cook team that's behind the whatever kitchen that there is. And there's always, it looks like so much is happening and so many people are moving and so many things are going on, but it kind of looks like a dance. Mm -hmm. And these people are highly trained individuals and they're making, you know, the meals always, especially at really nice restaurants, the meal kind of looks the same every single time it comes out. The quality is the same, but they also have to make sure that they're efficient and working in this flow state so that they can get things out on time. So a good restaurant has the timing down from when someone sits down and orders and gets their food. And that requires everyone in the kitchen to be a flow state. And often you don't see them having conversation. It's like at the rush hour when it's super busy, they're definitely in flow state Mm -hmm. back there. Kind of everyone knows how to move. Everyone Mm -hmm. knows what to say. I think when I think about that, I'm like that. It probably is a good feeling. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, that's actually... Uh, like a step further, which is called group flow, which the Navy SEALs talk about constantly. Like if 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 the SEAL teams are not in flow, then that could be catastrophic and dangerous. So mm-hmm. it's something that they talk about all the time. Yeah, the SEAL team is like next level. Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing about they're in flow and they switch leaders and they don't even discuss switching leaders. Mm-hmm. It's kind of just this thing that they do. Like they're they're all the same person, mm-hmm. just like Next level type Mm -hmm. shit, for sure. So personally, at my work, I feel like I'm in flow anytime I'm doing creative work. So I'm doing copywriting, I'm preparing for a video script, I'm podcasting, uh, maybe if I'm preparing for speeches, occasionally when I'm giving speeches, as long as I've prepared well, um, I get into like a deep flow state. Other things are like playing spike ball or snowboarding or backpacking, just doing physical activities, usually outdoors, get me into a state where I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm totally zoned in and I'm operating at my maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. For me, I definitely get into a flow state when I'm creating new features for our software and figuring out how to solve little problems. What is, what are we doing that's not its best and let's solve this little problem. It's a little bit uncomfortable And it pushes me a little bit, but it's definitely something that I'm capable of. So I absolutely love doing that. I love creating systems for us to, as a team, operate better. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite things to do. Just Mm -mm -mm. systems. (laughs) I know it's not the sexiest thing, but if I can sit down and I have a section of the business like collecting feedback from clients, sitting down and thinking about how we can create a system to get it done well and actually utilize the information that we're getting. It just, it's like totally, I just zone out and I can spend a couple hours and forget where that time went. An interesting thing just came up. Like a lot of the things that you, like the times where you feel in most 
the, the most state of flow are things that I think actually require someone to be in a flow state. Like it, it, you have to focus so deeply on them that if you're, dis- if you're too distracted, there's just no way you're going to be able to accomplish it because it's mm-hmm. so like detail oriented and you have to be, pay so close attention to detail and hold so many things in your mind at once. You almost have to be in a flow state. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, good thing that that's what I really love yeah, doing. That's great because that's the opposite of me. <laughs> so before we talk about how to get into a flow state, uh, I just want to say I really encourage anyone to just do more things that naturally get you into to a flow state. So some of the things that naturally get people and like automatically get people into a flow state are competing. So that can be anything from competing in a CrossFit competition or a weightlifting competition to my only form of competition these days, which is a a friendly spike ball game in Austin, Texas. Other things are dance or any form of play. Anything Mm -hmm. where you feel like you're just playing is kind of a direct path to a flow state. Yeah. Cooking, creating music, um, things that can in some sense be slightly like the the patterns are a little bit repetitive, like you're doing the same things over and over again and you enjoy doing them at the same time. And I do want to talk about um, what, are, what are some of the benefits, like why do we want to be in flow? Like what are the, some of the benefits of doing this, which we've talked a little bit about that. Also, getting into a flow state is not something like dance, for example, it might take you some time to be able to get into flow while you're dancing. Um, It's not something that, you know, if you don't feel it right away, you should just give up. For a lot of times in order to get to that type of, I guess it would be an altered state of consciousness. To get to that altered state of consciousness, you have to practice and you have to get comfortable enough that you can challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not something that um, occurs for absolute beginners in anything. Mm -hmm. So... Be patient. Yeah, you'll get there. With dance, especially like when you're first learning how to dance, you're completely caught up in your head because you're trying to remember the moves. Or you're like insecure, or you're embarrassed, or it's a little bit vulnerable to dance and move your body. So when you're in flow, you are present with what you're doing. So it takes some time. Okay. So how to get into a flow state? Here are three steps. Number one, and probably the most important, is to be doing something that you enjoy. There's this Peter Drucker quote, and he's one of the probably most famous thought leaders in the entrepreneur space of all time. He said something like, the worst thing in the world is to make efficient that which should not be done at all. So the worst thing that you could do is optimizing something that you hate in the first place. So you could follow the rest of the steps, but if you're doing something that you hate, you're probably not going to get into a flow state. You're probably going to resist it and continue hating it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is just do something you love. And if you're in... If you're on a team, in a team environment, then something that we really ascribe to, Adi taught me that word last podcast, <laughs> uh, something that we ascribe to is that is an idea of every single person on the team working inside of their unique genius rather than what is typical, uh, a lot of people doing work that they mostly, that, that frustrates them, that they feel is boring. But the, the status quo of how we should work is that work should be hard. We should do things that we, you know, we shouldn't like at all. We don't really roll like that. We try to find things that people really love Certainly, there are moments that are frustrating or some things that we don't love doing, but we try to have um, people doing as many things that really light them up and energize them as possible. So we recommend taking that approach. Yeah. Also, when you're doing something that you're in flow, you might be tired by the end of it, like physically tired, but in terms of your energy, it kind of fills you up instead of drains you of, oh, I never want to do that again. It's more, you could be tired because you physically exerted yourself and you've been focused for an extended period of time, but it, it definitely fills me up in emotionally or, um, in the other types of ways. Yeah. Yeah. There's like an energy and increased confidence Mm -hmm. and sense of accomplishment. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. You worded it better than me. So the next thing of how to get into flow is, uh, we already talked about it a little bit, but what you do should be challenging. You're, you want to toe the line of your capabilities. So you want to be on the edge of growth for yourself. So it should be just beyond what you're capable of. But if you go too far, you're just going to get frustrated and you're going to give up. So 
Um, for me, it's like a little bit, it's a new problem at work that I've, I've been, you know, there's these problems where sometimes I might even try and avoid it because I just like not sure I have the answers, but allowing myself to dive in and it's on the edge of, there's a piece of me that feels a little bit uncomfortable with even trying to tackle it because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. But when I dive into it and I'm in it, I get into a flow of trying to solve it. Mm -hmm. So it should be on the edge of um, your capabilities. Yeah, well said. And finally, number three is to clear all distractions. So the number one thing that gets in people's way of getting into a flow state are just external distractions. So let's say you want to start a blog. Right when you're starting a blog, writing, or maybe not right when you do it because that you, it might be really uncomfortable, but after you get into rhythm you practice, with, yeah. you practiced a little mm -hmm. bit uh, writing blog posts, writing is probably is like a really good way to get into a flow state. The thing that can really derail you is every time you sit down to write, because it's a little uncomfortable, you're almost looking for distractions. So your phone might buzz and you go and check a text message and then you go back to writing. And then two minutes later, you think about that email that you haven't responded to. And so you go and check that and then you go back to writing. And then, you know, someone knocks on your door and then you go back to writing. Mm -hmm. We have all of these distractions in our world today. And so to get into a flow state, you have to design your environment and plan ahead to remove all all distractions. So what are those distractions that we should remove? Yeah. Any type of social media, any type of, I mean, for me, it's like having multiple tabs open. And if I have the email tab open and the number changes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I want to know what that new thing is. Or I have Facebook open as a tab and I see a notification change. Any types of notifications that can intrude on your, anything really that can intrude on your environment that um, is not within your control. So maybe you even put a sign on the door saying, don't knock. Mm -hmm. We had friends that um, did shift work and they would put a, a sign on the door saying, we're sleeping, don't knock. Like, mm -hmm. don't wait, don't wake us up. So just putting a sign on the door, like no no distractions right now. I remember now. when we first met because you just wanted to distract me all day long. <laughs> I told you, anytime my headphones are on, don't distract me. Yeah, so putting signals out that you are not allowed to be distracted. Putting your putting, phone on airplane. Putting the signals out. Putting the vibe out. <laughs> putting the vibe out. Putting your phone on airplane mode. Only having one tab open on your computer or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, make sure that you don't have any responsibilities at that time. You don't have to do laundry. You don't have to pick someone up. Nobody's coming over. Like nothing like that. Just clear as much as possible. Because getting into a flow state is not... Um, it's you not only does it take a minute for you to get there but it also is if you you want to stay there for a while mm -hmm. so that you can enjoy it and get whatever it is that you're doing done you know like a pitcher has to play the whole game mm -hmm. or the chef has to work the whole shift so if he all of a sudden has his wife coming into the kitchen being like babe i need you to help me with this thing right. he gets out of flow immediately and it's going to take him some time to get back in it and it kind of screws everything up mm -hmm. so i actually like leaving my phone outside of the room that I'm working in, that's usually helpful because I've found even if I put it on airplane mode, you just then like I don't, yeah, I don't get any text messages coming in. But if I get into a state where I'm like, I don't know what to write next or I don't know what to do next and I'm or, or, or I get a little bored or something, I just reach for the phone too totally. quickly. Another one is straight up turn your internet off on your computer unless you absolutely need the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's clearing distractions. So just to wrap those up, uh, number one, ideally you're doing work that you enjoy. Uh, if you're not, then that's a, a another podcast for another day. Number two is it should be challenging, but not too challenging. It should be just slightly outside of your comfort zone on your edge. And number three is to clear all distractions. So phone, internet, uh, make sure that no one is physically going to distract you while you're working on whatever you're working on. Um, if you make these things a habit, you'll not only become more productive, but I think you'll actually thoroughly enjoy the work that you're doing. Yeah, like you talked about earlier, you'll be by the end of it, you might be tired, but you're going to be filled up in terms of confidence and achievement and pride. Flow state definitely, I think there's probably some research out there on the hormones that it releases in oh, your yeah. body. But uh, I'm not like Chihai, you know who the, the guy that I'm talking about? 
chick sink me high. I have no, no idea how to say his name. <laughs> but yeah, if you just Google, if you just Google like flow state Hormone expert researcher or, yeah, or whatever, yeah. all of his stuff comes up. I think the more often that we can get into the state, literally the more we're going to enjoy our lives, but it's also the way that we can reach our fullest potential and like really just stretch ourselves um, as much as possible throughout life. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Matus, for this question. I really appreciate it and hope that you guys got some value out of this. Peace. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.